Well, it's good to see these cars get out here on this day. A little breezy out there, but I don't think it's a big effect. Here comes the white flag. He'll lay down lap number one. One to go here. Fourteen five two five fourteen five two five on the first lap for Mike Looney. We'll come around and see what he can do on lap number two. Fourteen four eight one. Fourteen four eight one. Two pretty close laps, and you'll notice as these cars come out, they're getting a scuff lap, and then they're getting their two green laps of the first lap, not counting as a timed lap. Got to get some heat in those tires. That's right. And right now is a Caden Honeycutt out there. I talked to him earlier. He said it was an honor when Jeb uh, Burton reached out for him to be part of this race, and he's done some other action around the uh, country. And he is, I'm sorry, is that, yeah, he's out there. And he uh, definitely is uh, really jacked up to be part of this race today. The wind site development Ford out of Alito, Texas for Caden Honeycutt. As you mentioned, Tim, he finished sixth in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race at Atlanta. Fifth in the Snowball Derby back in 2020, but really since then, he's concentrated more on late model stock cars, which is what we're racing here this weekend at Orange County. His first lap, 14 3 4 1, and that first lap is the quickest. He said that is his personal vehicle. That's his personal uh, late model. He does not race at any other tours. This lap will be uh, 14. 0.386, so he dropped off a little bit there. We're noticing two cars out, two of them dropping down a little bit. For those of you watching on Racing America's Facebook and Twitter pages, we appreciate it. If you haven't done so, go to racingamerica.tv now and order your pay-per-view coverage. Our coverage will start at 545 Eastern time, and you don't have to be a subscriber, but if you are a subscriber, you get a discount. So order those pay-per-views now as our next driver out on the speedway. Per your take lines, Ford out of Raleigh, North Carolina for Deke McCaskill. And Tim, uh, if there's anybody here at this racetrack that knows it better than maybe Ward Burton, this is one of the guys, Deke McCaskill. Well, we'll see as he comes around. He's going to take the white flag here on lap number one. Trying to get the best line. Those back ends squirrel out a little bit. Here we go. It is a lap of 14.445. 14445, a tenth off there, second quick of the three cars that have qualified. 23 cars taking time here this afternoon. Checkered flag is out. And on the second lap, just uh he did pick it up just yeah, a little bit, but not quite enough. 14388 on lap two. That's the first one out of three we've seen pick up on the second lap. Uh, that's what I like about qualifying. And you know, these guys go out, they do the warm up, scuff the tires, get some heat in there. Two, two laps, and however they qualify, that's how they're going to start the race. No inversion for the beginning of the race, but uh, maybe later, huh? Buck Roos, I see you down there in the pit area right now. He's going to have reports for us throughout the night, and uh, we'll talk to him here in a little bit as our next qualifier out on the speedway is the Aaron Sales and Lease Ford out of Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina, Sam Yarbrough. And uh, I think what they call him, the Myrtle Beach Master, <laughs> which he was. Back in the day there. All right, lap number one. Let's see what time of time he posts here. 14.521, 14.521. Yeah, he's off. definitely going to want to pick it up here oh, on yeah. the second lap. Well, let's see what he does coming out of four. Checker flag flies. 14505. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Tonight's race, 200 green flag laps. You have a break at lap 100. And I think the biggest thing you're going to want to see is trying to stay on the lead lap on that first lap or uh, that first 100 lap segment. And then that second one, hopefully, you've made the adjustments that you need to make the car work uh, and go fast for the last 100 lap. Well, and don't forget, we have the inversion at. at uh 100 lap mark we're going to take the top eight they're going to draw a celsius can and they're going to invert uh, according to the draw on lap 100 so you definitely want to be in the top eight and for the first one because you could uh, improve yourself or be stuck right where you were well as we stand right now caden honeycutt the fastest of the first four qualifiers 14.341 for caden honeycutt is the next qualifier out the kenneth daniels roofing chevrolet out of littleton north carolina buddy isle jr Definitely a cool paint scheme there. I like that flaming ball uh, uh, behind the 11 there, the little swoosh that goes up there, like an old school uh, paint scheme on that car. Yeah, and uh, he was the rookie of the year here at Orange County last year. Had a couple of cars tour starts and 
that number, that flying 11, uh, Ray Hendrick made famous in this area, of course, with uh, red uh, car number 11s, and then he was a, a teammate to Jeff Bodine. He drove the uh, red 11, Jeff Bodine drove the red, the red number one first lap for Buddy Isle Jr., 14.562. You better hope to flame on that car. Heats up the tires and right. lap here a little <laughs> bit as he comes out for the checker flag. Let's see what's going to be this time. Lee, 14.374. Pumps him up to second on well, the chart. I think it did exactly <laughs> what you said it needed to do. He went so fast he missed pit entrance. That's almost. right. He did. He did miss pit entrance. <laughs> All, right. All right. Here we go. Here's a star we want to see. Well, and one of the drivers, uh, one of the two drivers who was instrumental in making this event happen in the per your tank line Chevrolet out of Halifax, Virginia. It is Jeb Burton, two-time winner in the NASCAR Xfinity Series at Talladega. He leaves here and heads straight to Richmond Raceway, where I think the Xfinity Series is on track tomorrow at 8.30 in the morning. You are so, correct, bright and early. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be no rest for the weary for Jeb, but I know he is very excited this opportunity to race his dad first lap 14.489 that is fifth quick one thing i like on the roof the golden corral the oh, logo yeah. on there it's like yeah that brings back some memories tommy baldwin racing is the first thing i think when i see that yep 14.515 on that lap so uh slowed down just a little yes, bit yes he did a bit weird it's been a mixed bag of cars that yeah. you know that have, have slowed down or picked up. Usually you see a trend, but I'm, I'm really not seeing one right now. And these guys are all watching each other, seeing what line seems to be working on maybe the first lap and then the second lap, like the high side, low side, you know, dive down. How do you take the corners in three and one? And that's kind of what I'm watching right now. On track right now, the MedTech Corporation Chevrolet from King William, Virginia, of Chase Burrow finished as the Rookie of the Year in the Cars Tour last season, 15th in points. Of course, his uh, name familiar, Jason Gully, drove zero ones here for a long time, and now Camden behind the wheel, 14.672, that's seventh quick. He's got the pedal on this lap to make an improvement there. Oh, he slows it down there at the apex just a little bit. Back end squirrels out. Checker flag for him, it'll be 14.595, picked up a little bit there. It seems a little flat on that car. Yeah, I'm understanding that he uh, might have been experiencing some transmission issues here in the last couple of days. We'll see uh, if he can get that worked out again. Glad to have you watching here on Racing America. Remember to watch tonight's Orange Crush 200. Go to racingamerica.tv. Order your pay-per-view coverage now. If you're a subscriber, you get a discount, but you don't have to be a subscriber to uh, RacingAmerica.tv, and uh, you're contributing to the Ward Burton Wildlife Foundation, and that's what it's all about. And uh, exciting start there for Andrew Patterson <laughs> on the first lap. Yeah, he came out of turn four there. The back end was going good. He gathered together, kept on going here. Lap number one, 14.547. For Andrew, he's going to try that in the second lap, see if he can pick it up a little bit. Wind Supply Chevrolet out of Inglewood, Ohio, and Andrew, part of the Jordan Anderson Racing Development Program. Second lap, 14.534, 14.534. You know, we talk about this mixed bag of, of who's been good on what lap. Caden Honeycutt, his fastest lap was his first lap. Uh, the majority has been uh, the second lap time for these cars, but uh, in Caden Hun Honeycutt's instance, it was the first lap. Qualifying now, another driver with a lot of laps here at Orange County, the Mitzi's Rapid Chevrolet out of Danville, Virginia. Six-time Orange County Speedway track champion, the legend himself, Barry Beggarly. Yep, he said he got uh, convinced by Jeb to come out and do this race, and so he said, what the heck? Once I got the call, he talked to me, and said, let's go for it. Two-time winner of the Martinsville 300 in 1985-1994. Former national champion as well. First lap for Beggarly, 14.893, 14.893. You got to remember, though, is very, I believe, pushing seven. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. That's good. 14.898 on the second lap. 
as the dance car comes out. And it's the car number 29. Or excuse me, I believe it is the car number 29. You are correct. The mobile one on there. That'll be Brent Cruz. Yep. Out of Hickory, North Carolina, 2023 Trans Am champion and winner for the Arkham Menard Series last year on the dirt at Illinois. So that's... <laughs> And now we're here driving a late <laughs> model at Orange County. That's, Just spread that talent around. That's right. Well, you know what? That's that's what we're seeing nowadays with these with these kids. Is is you used to want to see them have a little bit of dirt experience, a little bit of pavement experience. Seeing a lot of them doing this Trans Am thing now to get some road course experience. First lap, not bad, fourteen five zero zero, and that is six quick. So he takes all his experience. He brings it to three and four to the checkered flag for his qualifying lap. And we'll see that as it goes. 14.362 shaved off about a second and a half there. That's a that's a big pickup. Yep, second the, quick. Yep. Second quick of the 10 cars that have qualified as the next car comes out. And this is the car number 19 out of Owensboro, Kentucky. Five-time winner of the NASCAR Cup Series, Jeremy Mayfield. So I talked to him earlier. This car is the first time it's ever seen the track. They finished this at 6.30 this morning. So wow. they, they said we had a little adjustment. It wasn't really bad, but we had to make just enough, you know, to get it here. But they started talking about this like four or five months ago, and they finally got it together. He does not own the car. It's uh, Ethan Hutchins owns the car. So they uh, they decided to do it, put the car together, and it's uh, making its debut here today at Orange County in the Orange Crush 200. All right, let's see what the first lap will be for Jeremy Mayfield, 14.957 is the slowest of the 11 that have qualified so far yep <laughs> still doing plenty of racing though oh yeah the grand national super series going to do some more late model stock racing second lap 14 nine four seven that'll stay 11 fastest well, like you said it's 200 laps of action tonight yeah i mean there's going to be uh you know the, the track's going to change yep. get more rubber on it it's going to cool off tonight uh, you know, there's a lot of rain here over the last couple of days that uh, have got this track green, albeit they have got some practice. Uh, this will be the two of the number 15s in the field tonight, the number 15 right now. Stacy Purrier on the track out of uh, South Boston, Virginia, and that's Cotton's Mobile Repair on there. Former track champion here at Orange County Speedway and a two-time Pro Cup winner here at Orange County in the old Hooters Pro Cup Series. Lap number one comes across the stripe, and it'll be a lap of 14.588. Ah. Ninth quick. Again, we're seeing a heat kind of dirt track that out of turn four. Yeah, a, lot of, a couple of guys are going high up the end, turn four now. Second lap will be a 14.528, a slot pickup. That'll stay eighth quick as our next qualifier rolls out. This is a young driver I think has got a lot of high expectations coming in here. The High Rock Vodka Chevrolet out of Claremont, North Carolina. This is Landon Huffman, 2022 track champion at Hickory Motor Speedway, winning the Cars Tour last year at Tri-County and carrying that 75 number that uh, his dad, Robert Huffman, mm -hmm. made famous prior to going to the Goodies Day Series where he had a ton of uh, success as well. You got the High Rock Vodka on that car. That is a, that's his late model that he owns. He takes to different series and different tracks and it's not connected to a, one specific, like the Cars Tour or something like that. So he's, no, this is mine. I can take where I want and do what I want with it. First Ooh. lap for Huffman, 14 four, one, seven. That's fifth fastest one, the better first lap we've seen. And no thing about him, he, he's, a, he's a character. You know, good guy, outgoing, loves the fans. 14.392 that time. Yeah, he picked it up a yeah. little bit, but it'll stay fifth fastest. Had a good line, though. Again, if you're watching on Facebook or, well, the only place you can watch right now is Facebook <laughs> or Twitter. But the only place you'll be able to watch starting at 545 Eastern Time, our coverage here of the Orange Crush 200, benefiting the Ward Burton Wildlife Foundation as RacingAmerica.tv. Again, you don't have to be a subscriber. If you are a subscriber, you get a discount and uh, order your pay-per-view coverage right now. Right now, it's Logan Clark, number the other number 15, WG Speaks Heating and Air, and Mechanicsville, Virginia.
Good thing, the, good thing the 15s are totally different colors. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> First lap for Logan Clark, 14.566. That's 11th quick. Had a win last year at Dominion Speedway. That's up near Washington, D.C. Great place. I haven't been yet. Mm. Well, Shane's a little off, 14.476 that time around. But again, that'll stay down 11th quick of the 14 that have qualified. Qualifying now the Val Austin Chevrolet from Houston, Texas of Cade Brown. Won the track championship last year at Hickory Motor Speedway and was also the winner of the South Carolina 400 last November at Florence Motor Speedway. And this is a this is a good young talent. I, I watched him race at Florence whenever he was first starting out a couple of years ago and, uh, you know, get that uh, win in the South Carolina 400 last year, that's a big deal. Well, when you get a big name like that, big race name like that, people start to notice what you're doing. And nope. win that track championship here, Chris. I think that holds it up. First lap, 14.476, that's seventh fastest. And the sun's coming out now. See if that has any effect on the next couple of drivers. Comes across, takes the checkered flag for a lap of 14 point. Three, eight, five. Five. Nice, shaved a little off there. Yep. I like it. Fourth quick, Interesting. It up. Interesting. It's not everybody's doing the same thing. Some of the first laps fast, some it's the second lap. As we stand right now, Caden Honeycutt is the quickest, 14-3-4-1. And a problem here on our next qualifier, Chase Burrow. Not sure what happened. Uh, he's bringing the car back down in the pits now, and uh, hopefully they can uh, figure out whatever the issue is. Oh, shut it off. Hmm. Okay. It's a shame. But we'll see. Maybe he'll get another opportunity if they can see whatever's wrong with that double zero car. So he did not take a lap, he did not start, so he, I guess what I'm hearing from uh, the officials is that he can still go out and make a qualifying lap if he can get it going again, which is good. Number six coming out there now, that is Bobby McCarty, black asset apparel, driving a Ford out of Madison, North Carolina. Three-time cars, late model stock champion winner at the Thanksgiving Classic at Southern National back in 2019. He's won a lot of races. Uh, over the last number of years. And when he moved up to late model stocks from the Allison Legacy Series, he, uh, you know, started racing at South Boston, became a contender there. And, and since he started traveling, he's he's really been one of the top guys in the Carolinas here the last few years. South Boston is on my checklist. Tracks to get to. It's a great place. Yep, driven by it. Yep, not far from here. First lap, quick time Whoa. for Bobby McCarty. 14.319, that'll knock Caden Honeycutt off the pole. And Bobby McCarty right now is going to see if he can better it on lap number two. He does, 14.245. Wow. <laughs> now that guy's hauling the mail. Yep, that's a great lap right there. <laughs> he came to race. He did. <laughs> he came to race. Hey, man, it is an invitational yep. one. But it's paying fifteen thousand dollars to win. I mean, it's one of the highest late model stock, highest paying late model stock races in the country, and uh, these guys are going to race hard. Well, especially early in the season, that's great to start back that, put that, put that in the bank. We got uh, Terry Deese now in the zero six out there. Wilder's bolts and nut out of Oxford, North Carolina. We just got a report from race control that uh, when the, uh, the cars out on track are out lined up right now, uh, get qualified as Terry Deese gets his first lap in here. And it's going to be a 14, 5, 6, 9, 14 quick. The double zero of Chase Burrow will be on the five minute clock. Starting. But he has still got an opportunity. Okay. They're working on that car trying to get it out. Second lap, 14.422 for the number six, zero six machine. Of Terry Deese. That's a big pickup, too. That mm. moved him up to eighth quick. And there you see the work going on right now down on Chase Burrow's car. Here's a guy everyone's come to see. Yep, no doubt about that. That's the Rogers Heating and Cooling Chevrolet out of Halifax, Virginia. The 2002 Daytona 500 winner himself, Ward Burton. 
former winner here in the NASCAR Xfinity Series back when it raced here. One here back in 1993 in that Hardy's car. He's driving the number two because that was the first one he drove here in 1989. There you go, date that back that far in the, in the record books. And you know, he, he said that he's had to get used to, to these cars all over again uh, because they run bump stops yep. and these bump stops are just something that, this, uh, that you know, the old school racers aren't familiar with. First lap, 14,797. That's 16th quick on the first lap. 14.699, he picked up a little bit there. I don't know if it's enough to make a difference in the overall, but um, hey, he put down two solid laps. Yep, he'll stay 16th quick. And, you know, the main thing I think he wanted in addition to, you know, this event being a success for the Lord Burton Wildlife Foundation and racing with Jeb was just to make all the laps. Just to <laughs> get out there, make all the laps, and yep. have right, a good time. Right now the number 77 of Trevor Ward. Ward performance out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Out there doing his qualifying laps. And you talk about a guy who knows how to do it in big races. Won the Martinsville 300 last year, which is the biggest late model yep. stock race in the country. And uh, he's going to be gunning for that $15,000 tonight for sure. That's a good looking car. I love the combination of the gray. Haze gray underway from my Navy days. And then you got the red underneath it. 14.460 on lap one. That's not quick. Let's see what he does here on his second lap. I'm going to watch the clock here. Scoring monitor, 14.469. Yep. Kind of right there. Yep. Pretty much identical laps there. He'll stay not fastest as the next qualifier heads out onto the speedway now. And this is the car number 51, the Pepper Jack Kennels. Chevrolet, or excuse me, Toyota out of Danville, Virginia, 11-time NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series winner. That is Timothy Peters. He's the only Toyota in the field, too. Oh, there's two of them. I'm sorry. Well, it's actually two. a Chevy. I okay. think they, uh, they uh, switch wrong. cars up, okay. <laughs> which tends to happen sometimes. He takes the green flag there. I'm trying to watch if these guys are trying to take different lines as they go through one and two and then in the turns in three and fourth are doing a different one. I notice in the middle of the track, in three and four seems to be working best. We'll see right here. Lap number one of time of 14.464. Peters brings it around for his second lap. 386, 14386, he improves there. Good yeah, answer. pretty good lap there. That's good. And they always say, man, if I could have that first lap back, you know, if I could have done that first lap again, I would have been better on my second. Such is the case. There's a car. I like in this one. Got some purple, some white, the number 77. RS Race Cars Ford out of Danville, Virginia for Blake Stalling. Won the Rodney Cook Classic over at Ace back in 2017. Got the Superman logo on the front. Yes, sir. Let's see if he needs to put a cape on the car to go faster. <laughs> Might slow it down. Up the Batmobile with your yeah. run for it. All right, let's see. First lap for Blake Stallings. Four this 14.386, which is... That's a good lap. It is. To the second one yields right here. Coming out, taking the checker flag. 14.421. On the second lap, okay. so slowed down just a little bit. It's been a while since we've seen one of those slowed on the second lap. <laughs> I'm telling you, Alan, this qualifying is already interesting. I can't imagine what 200 laps is going to be like later today here at Orange County. The Orange Crush 200. Qualifying now, the best for tire and auto Chevrolet out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Ronnie Bassett Jr. finished seventh in Cars Tour points last year. Ten-time winner in the old UARA Stars late model tour. Of course, he uh, had some wins in the uh, what's now the Arkham Menard Series East and some Xfinity starts the last couple of years, but come back and concentrating on late model stocks here in 23 and now into 24. 14.416 on that lap. See if the second one yields any. 
Yeah, that middle line, they seem to be staying right through there and then stomping on the gas coming out of four. 350, 14.350, that's a pickup right there. Yep, that's a good okay. lap. That's third quick for Ronnie Bassett Jr. Timothy Peters, we didn't mention. Blake Stallings was seventh best as Timothy Peters eighth. And Chase Burrow did make it out yeah. here in this double zero, the MedTech Corporation Chevrolet out of King William, Virginia. Kind of got an old buckshot Jones feel to it. You know what? I'm looking at the numbers going, yeah. The <laughs> there was a character back in the day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, is that Randall LeJoyne? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I didn't say it. He takes the green flag there. Let's see, the car seems to be going uh, going pretty good after he, the repairs or whatever he had to make there on the pit road. I don't know if the car was stuck. They had it jacked up on the left side. Yeah. So, you know, we, we heard about those transmission issues and wonder if that continued. 14.594, that's 19th quick. Not bad. Pretty tight field. Yes. Very tight. No one's really out to lunch. 14.502. Yeah, saved a little bit off there. Oh, I'm glad he made it out there. I'm glad he could qualify. Yep, everybody is qualified now. The 23 cars here for the field. Again, those of you watching on Facebook and Twitter, don't forget to uh, order your pay-per-view coverage if you haven't already. I see that uh, Buck Roos is down in the pit area. He is with the past qualifier, Bobby McCarty Jr. G Jr. Bobby McCarty. Buck? Yeah, I'm down here. I got Bobby McCarty, and I tell you what, man, that blistering lap, almost a second to yourself. You said you were surprised when you saw that time when you climbed out. Yeah, these guys, are, they've worked their butts off today. I got to thank everybody at RNS Race Cars, uh, Black Acid Apparel, um, Bill Steen, DreamWorks, Caswell Glass, WG Speaks, um, just everybody at this whole whole group, Sterling Building Group, um, all the guys working hard. I mean, we we unloaded a little questionable. I, I was on I was on the fence about it, and we just kept working on it, making it better. And my crew chief Triplett and Marcus got together and made some really good calls. And um, I didn't screw up my second lap this time, so that was a normal. I I lay down a good first one, and then I will ruin the second one. So uh, to not uh, to not mess the second one up was was, you know, made me feel good. There you go, the Rogers, heating and cooling, cool move. Getting the pole today, Bobby McCarty in car number six. Well, thank you very much. Good to hear from him. He was uh, surprised, he said, by that, but he knows a lot of hard, hard work went into that. And once our coverage tonight begins, you'll be hearing a lot more from Buck as, uh, again, we've uh, been glad to bring you this free view here on Facebook and Twitter. Let's Easy. take you through the unofficial uh, rundown of qualifying. Again, they'll line up straight up as they qualified. But uh, as you said, there'll be a, uh, at halfway, during the halfway break, top eight will draw a Celsius can. They're numbered one through eight. That's how we reshuffle the deck. So Bobby McCarty is the quick qualifier. Caden Honeycutt will start second. Ronnie Bassett Jr. at third quick. Brent Cruz will start fourth. And Buddy Isles Jr. will start back in fifth. Kate Brown is sixth, Blake Stalling seventh, Timothy Peters eighth, Deke McCaskill ninth, Landon Huffman, he will start in tenth. Terry Deese is eleventh, Trevor Ward twelfth, Logan Clark thirteenth, Mike Looney in fourteenth, and Jeb Burton fifteenth. Chase Burrow will start sixteenth, Sam Yarborough seventeenth, Stacey Furrier eighteenth, Andrew Patterson nineteenth, and Camden Gully twentieth. Ward Burton will start twenty first, Barry Beggarly in twenty second and Jeremy Mayfield will round out the field. Again, our coverage set to begin at 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, that's 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time on RacingAmerica.tv. Please order your coverage now. Again, that's RacingAmerica.tv. Your proceeds are going to benefit the Ward Burton Wildlife Foundation. Pre-race will start at 6 o'clock, and green flag expected at 6 30 Eastern time. So for Buck Roos and Tim Pacman, I'm Alan Dietz. We'll see you over on RacingAmerica.tv at 545.